Greetings, heathens. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, it is officially National Bookshop Day. Woo! Cheering, cheering. Yes, wonderful. We love a bookshop. We love a bookstore. We love a bookshop. And I thought, you know, what an excuse or reason to go book shopping. Why not, right? It has to be done. So, um, let's first say cheers. And I mean, how cute is this? Well, Fox, best coffee in the world. And also... <laughs> So raise your coffee or I have brought the uh, the mulled wine and I, I don't know if it's too early, but hey, you know, I've got half a bottle to get through. <laughs> cheers to bookshops and cheers to bookshopping. So I thought I would do a little haul. So I went bookshopping. I went to Waterstones. They're also doing double points, if you remember. So that was fun. I went to my local indie bookstore, um, the one I've talked about before. I think they actually called the last bookshop, but it's Bill and Ben's, so I think it's like a branch of that. And then I also went to Goldsboro Books. Um, so, best coffee ever. Let's put that up there and not drop it. Where shall we go first? Okay, let's go to um, the last bookshop. So, this one is, um, I, I had it in one of my other um, videos. It is a bookshop here in Brighton. And they've got a few around the country in the UK. But what they do is they sell kind of overstock, overrun books. They're all brand new, but they're vastly reduced. So nothing is more than five pounds. So these books, I think they were like $3.99, $4.99, $4 99 So literally five quid for brand new books. And it's fun going in there because it's like an adventure, right? You never know what you're going to get because they just have odds and ends. So the bits I got this time... One I was so excited about, so I'll start with this one. So this book, Julie Bartz's The Writing Retreat, has been on my wish list for ages because it sounds like exactly the kind of thing I want to read. So also, it's kind of giving me proper winter vibes. So I was like, this is going to be perfect for next month, for November. Um, and I'm also planning to do like a whole thriller kind of vlog, reading loads of thrillers. So... This is going to be perfect. So this is apparently a month-long writing retreat um, and it's being hosted by a horror author and it's on an island. So she's the priestess of feminist horror. She's hosting it. And uh, I think as they arrive, they realise that writing may not necessarily be the reason why they're all there. It's giving me very much and then there were none. So I love any horror kind of that claustrophobic locked room type of horror so stuck on an island and the whole writing retreat yes yes that was just a, a big yes for me then i got the second book in the tracy wolf um series so the first one is crave and this one is crush they randomly there was literally one of these in the shop had this and i was like perfect because i'm gonna do i'm planning a, a massive vampire um video and i've got the first one i found the first one actually in a second hand shop so I've got this one, so I'm going to be doing a reread of that series. Actually, I think I only ever read the first book, so I don't think I've ever read Crush, so I'm quite excited. And then another book that's actually been on my wish list, my Amazon wish list, is this one. I heard someone talk about this, and I just thought it sounded really wonderful. Also, anything set in Paris. And I'm dipping my toe into more romance. So this is A Caribbean Heiress in Paris by Adriana Herrera. And it's Paris 1889. And Aries Brava is from a rum empire. And she sailed all the way from Santa Dominica um, with one purpose, expanding her family business. And there she apparently runs into an earl. Mm, yes. And uh, hijinks ensue in Paris. So yeah, I just think that sounds great. I just think like, that's going to be a fun time. I read so many kind of dark books and thrillers and horrors and dark gothic and dark dark romance which whew, i'm so into at the moment um but that sounds like it's gonna be a bit more fun so i thought as an antidote to the uh, madness then i've got a, a very big um waterstones bag and a goldsboro book so i've i've got the one in here so let's do that one next so this is goldsboro books uh if you don't know they are they basically specialize in first edition signed exclusive editions so they also have a book box that i'm mm, thinking about signing up for for the coming year so i think i might treat myself to that with them and they do beautiful special editions my um shadow stitch special edition is from there but they also just do like first edition signed ones that are just regular but they're all hardcover um, and you can see they all come beautifully protected and this is all the little liars by victoria selman 
I don't know if this is signed or not. Uh, it is. Oh, lovely. And it's wet signed. Oh, God, I love a good wet sign. It's signed and num and dated, so 180823. Um, um, and this book is, again, it's a thriller. So I was very excited about it. And it. I also have one by the same author. I'll, I'll remove the one and I'll show you because it's right over here. It's Truly Darkly Deeply. And I'm planning on reading both of these books. So this one, I think this was about childhood friends. Yeah, so California 2003, a 13-year-old girl disappears from a party um, at a lake. Discovered on the trunk of a nearby cotton tree is the word liar graffitied in blood. It sort of had me from that. Um, and then it's what you know three teenagers went to the lake that night only two came back uh, but that's only part of the story um, who really killed her and what are they hiding so I love um, oh, what's the Riley Sega book Vi uh, is it Final Girls no uh, it's the other one about the liars <laughs> and there's another there's another author that wrote one about again girls kind of going missing and then you find out who actually did it and a group friend of li that was lying and I love that. I love kind of messed up um, friendship groups. And uh, when one of them gets, I love it. I think it sounds fantastic. Also, that cover's beautiful. It's giving me pretty girls vibes, that cover. Um, I suppose the locket, right? Right, so those are that. Then I've got a giant bag um, from Waterstones. So I'm just going to, we're just going to, this is an adventure. We're just going to go through and I just picked up everything. Ah, so the reverent, the reverent, the reverent, not the reverent, the revenant <laughs> games uh, by Margie Fuston. So I believe this one is like a vampire tournament. So it had the word vampires and I was like, mm, yes. And it says once a year, the revenant games take place between enemy witch and vampire kingdoms. Oh, yes. For 17 year old Bert Bly, competition means the chance to win immortality for her best friend and resurrection for her lost sister. Dangerous plan to play both sides begins. Oh, yes. I remember someone talking about this. I can't remember who the YouTuber was, but I just thought it sounded fantastic. Also, the cover. What's with like, I'm loving the plant life and like the mushrooms and that on the covers lately. It's a thing. Has anybody else noticed that? Like the um the new ML Rio, that cover is. Oh, cover goals. As you can tell, I love the colour. Um, but yeah, mushrooms and plant. I, I love all that. It's very um, it's giving me kind of a what feast at night vibes as well. Again, that's a fabulous cover. Then speaking of fabulous covers, I've got a couple of special editions. So this is The Great When, and this is actually by Alan Moore, who uh, he he was more sort of a screen and comic writer, so From Hell, he's the writer for From Hell, and I believe this is his first novel, and I was like, mm, yes, I mean, look at that cover, <laughs> look at that sprayed edge, isn't it stunning, and then oh, the end papers, it's so beautiful, oh, look at that, just, oh, oh, that is, oh, that is good. So, I believe Magical London, kind of Harry Potter for adults. A tour through fantastical London where history and myth collide, murder stalks the streets and the mundane becomes very magical indeed. It's 1949, City of London, amidst the smog of the capital. A hapless 18-year-old employed by a second-hand bookshop. One day, an errand to acquire a book for sale, Dennis discovers a novel that simply does not exist. It's a fiction book, a figment from another novel. Yet, it is physically there, in his hands. How? There's more to that, but that is enough said for me. I mean, I love anything kind of set in in London. Um, I love the uh, the fact that again, it's a bookstore. It centers around books. I love books around books. And if this is anything like his other works, I feel like I'm gonna like it. I really have really high hopes for this. <laughs> it's so beautiful. If nothing else, it's it's beautiful. Moving on. <laughs> to another special edition so this is the wood smoke women's book uh, the wood smoke woman's book of spells and again this is a um exclusive walk stones gorgeous gorgeous sprayed edges there and does it have anything on the front no disappointing but this one is about witches <laughs> it says magical and absolute treasure on the front it's by rachel greenlaw and it's Carrie Morgan expects trouble when she returns to Woodsmoke after 10 years. What she does not predict is the beautiful stranger who walks into her life uh, with the first frost and with whom Carrie begins to fall in love. Mm. Bound to her family's book of spells and a deep magic that flows from the mountains, Carrie's family warn her that new love is a curse who will disappear when the frost thaws. If Carrie is to embrace the power of the Morgan woman 
uh, she must trade something in return, but is lifting a curse worth any price. Very much practical magic coded. Um, I'm the only one that's thinking that, and that is a good thing. That is that is a compliment because I love practical magic. Then hmm, I had to treat myself. I had to get this version. So this is the Crow, the special edition by James O'Barr. I um I love the Crow. I love the original film. I have not watched the remake. I can't bring myself. I need to. I I I, I want to. But it's one of those things, you know. But this is like a special edition. There's some gorgeous sort of um, fan art in the front. And yeah, this is the original the comic version of The Crow. And uh, as any good goth will tell you, it's a must. Right. And well, as we get double, double points, yeah, why the hell not? Then the next one. So I am in a real kind of gothic fairy tale phase uh dark romance dark gothic fairy tale anything set in the victorian era and i'm also loving anything to do with like magical con so caravel love caravel and i read phantasma <laughs> that's a spoiler for another video but mm. Mm, yes so i'm really kind of on that trip so i saw this book and this is called the winter garden by alexandra bell and it's i'm looking for the most spectacular remarkable pleasure garden this world has to offer so i believe that uh again i think this is kind of like a victorian um set era and there's this mysterious winter garden and our main protagonist she has to marry someone she doesn't want to marry so she kind of um runs away so in the beginning she she goes to this winter garden this magical winter garden and then it sort of disappears so it's kind of giving me that sort of caravel vibe but then she's set to get married and she runs away and she and her best friend end up in the winter garden um and they go the prize being uh so it's when they end up there invitations for competition to create breathtaking pleasure gardens the prize being one wish from the last of the winter garden's magic so very kind of caraval phantasma but n not not as kind of dark as phantasma i think this is going to be a lighter version but i just thought it sounded so magical and again that's going to be a perfect read for for the next few months it's going to be one of my winter tbr and then speaking of magical and caraval once upon a broken heart stephanie garber believe it or not i have the other two books i don't know how i managed to do that i think i probably mistook one of them for the first book in the series and then I went to go read it and went, oh, look, I've got book two and three. Brilliant. Great. I need book one. So I thought it was double points. I'm getting book one. I don't think I need to really tell anyone what's that about. But again, that'll be in a future video. Then back on my uh, kick of dark romance, <laughs> I'm really narrowing down what I like. And mm, Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. I've heard so many people talk about this and they say it's 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 a serial killer romance. I loved Mayfly. So I feel like this might be sort of Mayfly coded. Also, apparently it's quite funny, which I really like. Uh, and there are some really gory scenes. And, and yeah, I haven't heard a single person dislike this. So I've really got high hopes for that. And like I said, because I liked Mayfly so much, I feel like I'm going to like that. And then I believe this is, yes, we have reached the final book, The Witches of New York. I, this is by Amy McKay, I have been wanting this for ages. It's actually, I think it's been in my Amazon wish list, and then it was out of stock and it was like really expensive. And literally today, as I was just perusing the shelves, I was actually looking for Butch and Blackbird and I came across this and I was like, sold so again this is 1880 so again i'm on that i'm on that trip so which is adeline tom and eleanor st Clair have opened a tea shop in manhattan specializing in curses palmistry and potions you literally had me at that right when an enchanting woman called beatrice joins the witches in uh, as an apprentice she soon uh, proves indispensable but her new life is marred by strange occurrences she's yeah, she sees things no one else can she hears voices no one else can hear she's been touched by magic or is she simply losing her mind it, 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 it just sounds great and again i almost feel like i don't know why i feel like it's a wintry book so that's going on my winter tv on and that is it 
so that was my World Book Day book haul. I hope you all doing great. I hope you all have wonderful books to read this weekend. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know if you've read any of those, any recommendations. And as always, thank you so much for joining me. Cheers to uh, books and bookstores. <laughs> Another glimpse of that great cup. And I will speak to you all very soon.